What's going on YouTube? We are back with another video. Today we're gonna go in a little bit of a day in my life. Today is gonna be the first day of me working on my first self-made web application, which just basically means I'm not gonna use any tutorials. I'm gonna really just basically be trying to make a web application based off of my knowledge and also kind of doing some research um, as well for different things that I wanna input into this web application. But today's schedule is looking pretty pretty light. Um, I wanna finish one of my code camp sessions. I usually work, work on code camp for about 90 minutes. And then from there, I kind of wanna work on getting some trades in, back testing a little bit of trades. And, but mainly today, main focus and where I'm gonna start today as of right now is definitely to work on some of the components for my React application. Uh, but first, let's get into what the idea of the React application is going to be. What do we have kind of in mind for our application? Well, first things first, what I kind of have in mind is I kind of drew a little bit of a layout here in Notion. So the layout is going to be very simple. I think for a first project where I'm not really going to have that much help from a tutorial, right? The best thing to do is just to start off very simple. So I want to build an idea bank. So basically what I want to do is I have this thing where I've always been constantly trying to find a system to kind of be able to take notes a little bit. Well, not notes, but I've always been looking for a system where I could kind of just jot any ideas I have down and just store them. But in my search of endless productivity, I guess, applications, I've never really found one that's just been best suited for me because honestly, I just like simplicity and all of these things are just so complicated and I don't really care to learn about it. So this is the perfect first project application that I can work on. So what I wanted to be is just simply basically input bar where we input our ideas. Ideas get stored here in a certain list of, uh, in, in a list formation from one to five. And then what I want us to be able to do is if we need to edit some of these ideas, we can simply edit it here. If we no longer like the idea anymore, we can simply just delete it. And then I wanna also have a search function, which just basically means that I want to kind of, if a certain idea has the keywords that we're looking for, right? You would put it in this in bar and instead of hitting add button, if you hit search, it will just filter out the ideas that don't have the keyword that is inside of this input bar. So that's something else that I'm looking for as well too. And then also I want to just, <laughs> I have a simple add button, right? So whatever you put in here, here we'll search for the context and here we'll just add it. And then also what I wanna try and do, which is a neat little idea, this is gonna be the title, the top of the page, but when I click on the title, what I want to happen is just simply that an input field comes up. So you know, when you click on something and then something pops up. So for example, if I click on this, this pops up, that's the same function I have what that I wanna have with the title. I want the title to be an anchor where you can just simply click on it. And when you click on it, something pops up and you can just simply have a search bar and it'll be add. And then you could just add the input and it will just get directly added into the database. So with that being said, first thing I'm gonna focus on is setting up my components. So let's do that really quickly. So we just got done doing the components. Um, like I said earlier, if I can pull up the notion. Like I said earlier, this is how the kind of, oh, whoops, whoopsies. So like I said earlier, this is how I kind of want the, the template to kind of look like. This is what I'm kind of looking at when it comes to the idea bank. I want to have the name, input bar, and then where I have the input icon, and then or the input card and then the list that just kind of categorizes them and stuff like that so right basically for people who are not coders which is probably majority of my audience what components basically are 
are just sections on the website. That's all they really are. Um, they're just sections on the website. So if you go to a certain website, so for example, let's say we go to YouTube, right? And we'll use this as an example, right? So each one of these have different sections. So right here, this is the video player section. The, where I'm kind of circling right now. This is the video player section. This may be the recommended video section. Notice how they all kind of are equally spaced and equally rounded, right? This is what you may call the header section where it has the logo where you can instantly go back to the home page. You click on this, you get more items, right? These are all just sections and that's basically what components are. So that's what I've learned what components are so far. So what I have is just four main components. I have Omar's idea bank, which is just a title. And I think I may have to change that later on in the future. I hope that doesn't give me a problem, but this is what this project is about is just learning. And the more you learn, the better you get, right? So if this causes a problem later on down the line, past Omar, we will know that, hey, listen, let's not do that again, right? So now we see that we have the idea bank. This is its own component right here. We have the input bar, right? Which is its own component right here. I put it as add search because I want to input search and add, right? And then I have the idea card, which is just basically going to be each one of these It's going to be the card. And in this card, I'm going to have basically the idea, the ability to edit the idea and the ability to delete the idea. And then the idea list right here is just simply going to be the numbered list from here to here. So what I'm going to first work on now, so what I'm going to work on now is I'm simply going to look at the let me type OBS like I have that in front. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work on the first card and I'm just going to spend all of today kind of focusing on the first card. I got about an hour and 12 minutes to finish. So I'm going to spend the majority of the day working on the first card which is just the idea bank um and that's just going to be pretty much the title and uh we'll take a we'll come back to it when we see what it looks like and until next time so two and a half hours later we just got done finished coding let me show you what it's looking like okay so i was not recording the actual application for the last like two minutes so i'm going to quickly run through it again Right? Simply what I worked on is this header part, right? What we want is when we click on this, we want this to record up, we want this to pop up, we want a little input here to pop up if we click on the title and then we hit add. How do we do this it was just simple. We ran a couple of functions. So we ran the first function open, right? We created a function called open that just basically says add an event listener to the click function. And then we just simply put um, once once you uh, once it identifies the button that we're trying to click on, it will now display the input field that you see is hidden, right? It will display it. And then once we we just added another uh, function called close, which just basically means once we click on the button close pop pop up, which is just basically add here it will display it back to hidden slash none. You see, that works pretty smoothly. All right, let's go ahead and get into our next task for today. All right, so we just got done with learning a little bit about graphic design. Um, before I go ahead and end this video, I really want to go ahead and talk about a lesson that I just previously learned or I just kind of discovered. And I kind of want to go over it a little bit because I think it's very helpful. And it's just simply the or my discovery of viewing things on a spectrum instead of a extreme static yes or no. Right. And what I mean by this is just by kind of so first things first let's identify what a spectrum is and then we'll get into the whiteboard drawing so what a spectrum is is just something that's used to classify something um in the terms of its position on a scale between one extreme end and another so let's get into an example of all right so here i have my whiteboard and excuse my drawing because my drawing is bad let's go ahead and go with the black mark so i'm gonna try my best to draw this we have two extremes, right? Two extremes. I think I could draw that a little bit bigger. So we have one extreme over here 
and another extreme over here. So what this basically means is usually as traders, what we tend to do, right? Or just human beings in general, we tend to, are we profitable or not profitable, right? So for my traders, a lot of, a great example of this would be, are we a profitable trader or are we not a profitable trader? And we can't really, you know, determine exactly where we are, especially if you, you know, have a bit of experience, you're not profitable yet, but you're not losing money. It's hard to determine where you are. And if you can clearly identify where you are on the spectrum, then you know what you need to do in order to work uh, to get towards closer towards your goal or whatever that may be. So let's say for example, right? We're taking it the example of a trader thinking, are we profitable or not, right? So on one side of the spectrum, we know instantly we are thinking, crazy thing is this is how my handwriting looks like in real life. Now on the other side, we're thinking about big money loser. So when going back to the same example, we, let's just use this as the middle point. So going back to the same example, right? For example, you've been trading for two and a half years. You're not a big money loser, but nor are you a big money maker. And you don't really know where you are, right? You're not either one of these extremes. So you're somewhere in the middle, right? So that autom automatically identifies that you're somewhere closer to the middle than to either one of these. Now, if you're making good money from trading, then you know you could be a little bit more on this side. If you're somewhat profitable in trading, then you know you could be somewhere on this side. If you're losing a lot of money in trading, then you know you're somewhere on this side. If you're losing a little bit of money or less money than you was before, then you know you may be closer to that break even middle point of the spectrum. So how you go about this is just simply identifying where you are on the spectrum. So let's say, for example, I'm right here, right? I am profitable. I'm not losing big money and I'm making little profits here and there, making little profits, but they're little. Right. They're not as big as I want them to be to be a big money maker. Well, then in that case, what is some things that you think you need to think of? You don't really worry. You don't need to really worry about how to not lose a lot of money because you're doing pretty well at that. You need to worry about how to capitalize or make more money than the money that you're making now. So now instead of just focusing on something that really wouldn't be too helpful to you, you focus on something that can propel you even more forward into your scale or on the spectrum. So for example, instead of focusing on which strategy to choose, you instead focus on how can I make more money from my winning trades, right? You start asking yourself the question, how can I make more money from my winning trades? And then how can I lose a little bit less on my loser trades so that I'm making more money, right? That's the key thing that you're starting to, that's the key question that you're asking yourself. And it's totally different from someone who's right here. You see, someone who's right here may be asking themselves the question, how do I not, right? Not lose, right? How do I not lose, this is horrible, big, big M, right? The question that they'll be asking themselves here is how do I not lose big money? And it's different because there are both at different stages on their trading journey. And therefore they are on different sides of this spectrum and identifying where you are on the spectrum. If there's one thing you take away from this whole gap session I just did is if you can identify where you are on the spectrum, you can really clarify what you need to work on, right? And that's the, that's the best thing. That's what I've kind of learned by viewing things on a spectrum. You can kind of look at, okay, cool. What needs work and what doesn't, because I know exactly where I am on the spectrum. Hope this helps somebody. That being said, we're going to go ahead and end this video here. If you liked it, go ahead and leave a like button. If you enjoyed some of the content today, got to see, I don't know what a day in my life kind of looks like, subscribe for more. So uh, until next time, brothers and sisters, peace. Thank you.